This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Visit nordvpn.com slash nameexplain to get 75% off a free year plan and stick around till the end of the video to find out how to get an extra month for free. In October 2018, many news websites started reporting on the couple of Adam Thomas and Claudia Patatas as they came under scrutiny simply due to the naming of their child. Many wanted the name to be banned. Now, this might sound silly, but it kind of falls into place when you realise they gave their child the middle name of Adolf in honour of the former German leader. This isn't the only instance in history, however, that the name of a child has come under scrutiny. Certain names have come under scrutiny or outright banned across the world, some due to the history held with the names, like with Adolf, and some just because of how silly they are. The name Akuma has become illegal in Japan due to it being the Japanese word for devil, and in France, parents were disallowed from naming their daughter Nutella. While this might sound somewhat silly, and let's face it, a lot of the time it is, a lot of countries have compiled lists of banned names, with some nations taking it a step further. One that comes to mind is the naming laws in Sweden. Sweden enacted a naming law in 1982, which meant that all children born in the country have to have their first names approved by the government. This was first introduced all the way back in 1901, meant to prevent non-noble families giving their children noble names. Over time this changed and the law reads in English that first names shall not be approved if they can cause offence or can be supposed to cause discomfort for the one using it, which is a logical way to put it. Of course, a famous example of this is with baby B R F X X C C X X M N P C C C C L L L M M N P R X V C L M N C K S S Q L B B 11116 which is pronounced Albin. Yet perhaps the most interesting case of name control in a country is with the island nation of Iceland. While most countries have a list of banned names, Iceland has a list of approved names, a collection of just a few thousand names put together by the Icelandic Naming Committee. If you have a child in Iceland and wish to give it a name not on the list, you have to send a request to the Icelandic Naming Committee and hope they approve it, and they may very well not. As to have a name approved by the Icelandic Naming Committee, it has to be a name that can fit into the conventions and grammar of the Icelandic language. An example of this would be with the name Carolina, which isn't allowed and must be Carolina instead to fit with Icelandic culture and language. Another interesting example happened in 2014 with Harriet and Duncan, two children living in Iceland with their parents from the UK. When it came time to renew their passports, the Icelandic government didn't approve their names as they didn't fit with the Icelandic conventions, leading them in the eyes of the law to be simply called girl and boy. Their British father said that all this is really rather silly, which is perhaps the most British way of going about it. There are of course many more rules on baby names across the planet, but this video isn't just a curious look at the weird baby names of funny rules on names from across the globe. I wish to apply some of my own thinking and ideas onto this subject. Is this way of banning certain names the correct thing to do? So from here on out in the video we are somewhat leaving the world of facts and sources behind. I'm not really going to share my personal opinion on the matter, but more some of the schools of thought that I have thought about on this subject. You may think something completely different, and that's completely fine. So I live in a country with far less strict naming rules. I've I've known people personally with very unconventional names, so it's something I'm used to. Freedom of expression is a big thing here in the UK. Article 10 of the Human Rights Act of 1998 explains that everyone has the right to freedom of expression. This right shall include freedom to hold opinions and receive and impart information and ideas without interference by public authority. And to my ears, this sounds like it should apply to what you can call your child. If you want to name your child something unique, you have the right to without being denied it by the government. Of course, in conjunction with this, people should perhaps be aware that even though they have the right to name a child anything, there are names that are perhaps more taboo than some. And this is where a retort can come into play. Let's look back at the Swedish naming law. It states the name cannot cause offence or can be supposed to cause discomfort for the one using it. And this is so, so important. Naming a child isn't like naming a car or a pet tortoise. That tiny baby will grow up and become another human in society. A ridiculous name given by uncaring parents can have huge ramifications for the child once grown up. In society and in the workforce, even before before the child is an adult, kids at school can be creative with bullying names. Even with normal conventional names, kids can still find a rhyme or a pun to bully others. So giving your child a name that's easy to make fun of straight away can be damaging. Of course, however, a retort to this can be that when the child is old enough, they can legally change their name anyway. Of course you can have very silly names, but what I'm more interested in is the name we started with, Adolf. 
In a vacuum, the name is just another name. However, the name Adolf has become cemented as a taboo name thanks to the actions of just one man. But he isn't the only notorious figure in history. Many people from history have done awful things, but their names haven't gone down in infamy or have been banned or dubbed taboo. Where is this line drawn? Take the name of the most infamous Russian leader, Joseph Stalin. He did many bad things in his time, but the name Joseph has remained a popular given name, not becoming associated with the one figure like Adolf has. The main reason names can be taboo is due to the people associated with them. While the general consensus may be that Adolf is a taboo name, as we saw at the start of this video, there are clearly small pockets of society who do not see it as a taboo name, but rather a name that should be celebrated. And this can work the other way around. A name of someone who's genuinely considered to be a good person could be a name of taboo to another person. It's all about our individual ideologies. Perhaps most interestingly is looking into the future. Names that are now taboo are due to the history associated with them, but history is always being made and we we might not know what the future holds. Say if there's another tyrannical dictator in the future who goes down as one of the most infamous people in history. Say if they had a common conventional name like John or Sarah. What would become of that name? In the fallout of World War II, the name Adolf dropped in popularity and people already with the name use the nickname. The Adidas founder Adolf Dassler started going by Addy after the war. Would we lose a name as common as John due to something like this happening? What would happen to the many people already called John? Anyway, I've been rambling on for far too long. I definitely can't wait to see the like to dislike ratio on this one. But maybe we should go back to that initial question. Is it right to ban names? Well, it's hard to figure out a definitive answer. There's arguments for and against it. And that's okay. Not every question needs an answer. Sometimes a question just raises more questions. Luckily, a question that does have a definitive answer is what's my favorite VPN to use? And that definitive answer is of course NordVPN, who have very kindly sponsored today's video. This video has somewhat been about censorship, and censorship on the internet remains a prevalent issue. Some countries have very strict online censorship and control, and luckily NordVPN helps make sure your information stays safe and nothing comes between you and your online experience. They have thousands of super fast servers across 60 countries which connect you to military grade encryption, giving you a safe and secure online experience. And if at any point you don't feel comfortable using NordVPN, their 24 7 customer support and 30 day money back guarantee will give you peace of mind. NordVPN offering viewers of name explain that amazing deal for a limited time of 75% off a free year plan by going to nordvpn.com slash name explain down in the description below. That works out at just $2.99 a month, an amazing deal as the busiest shopping days of the year approach. You can even get an extra month for free by using the promo code name explain. Thank you very much to NordVPN for helping support name explain and once again that's nordvpn.com forward slash name explain and promo code name explain. Thank you. And of course, a huge thank you to all my patrons whose generous donations on a monthly basis make Name Explain possible. Thank you all so much.